So I bet a lot of you can agree with me when I say I absolutely love analog. It's the sound, the feel, the texture, and the fullness that draws many of us in. Many sample makers and major artists are going back to using analog gear, as well as using emulations to create that feel and bring it into today's music. I mean, listen to some of the biggest major albums that were released in the past three years alone. So whether it's the lush sounds you hear in R.I.P. Screw from Travis Scott's Astroworld, or the weekend's 80s inspired track Blinding Lights off his After Hours album, it's very apparent that the average listener loves that sound too. So how can you emulate that full sound, that feel, that texture, even if you don't have any analog gear? The answer is warmth. So today I'm gonna to show you guys what is analog warmth, how it'll improve your sounds, as well as how to get that sound using the new Arturia FX Collection 2 plugins. So before we start twisting knobs and touching random stuff, let's talk about what it is as well as the pros and cons. Warmth is harmonic distortion, but in a good way. In the digital world, once you hit zero, you start getting terrible clipping and it doesn't sound good. But in the analog world, when you drive the signal, you actually get a much fatter, ear-pleasing effect to the sound, which is called harmonic distortion. People often reference tape saturation, vacuum tubes, preamps, all sorts of stuff whenever they talk about warmth. So the benefits are it's ear pleasing and it sounds good as well as it's like a timeless thing uh, you don't need a lot of elements if you ever look at a band in the 80s they don't have a ton of synths there's probably a guy on guitar a guy on drums a guy singing lead vocals probably two guys playing the keys there's not a lot of instruments because there's that fullness within the synths. A disadvantage of having actual analog gear is it's not as convenient as you think. Setting up and wiring, it takes a lot of work to do and you only get musicians for a certain amount of time. So you really wanna be respectful of not only their time, but their creativity because people lose ideas pretty quick. And if you're not fast enough or you're setting up all this stuff and say something blows out or something doesn't work right, or you don't know how to fix this one problem quickly, you know, that's pretty much wasting time. Or as opposed to digital era, you could just pull up with a laptop with the Arturia bundle and just get to work. And you could pretty much get that desired sound that you would like. So why not use them for convenience? But enough talking, enough history lesson. Let me show you guys how to incorporate it in your tracks. I'm gonna break down three different beats and just show you guys how I use them as well as what they sound like without the effects. Okay, so here's an idea with a spice loop. Here's that same loop but without the effects. Okay, so clearly night and day. Let me show you guys what I did. Oh, if it sounds weird to you because there's no kick on the one. Oh, it's been sounding cool to me, just kind of like creating different grooves and stuff. So let's start with the melody. This is what the melody sounds like with no effects. Let's turn this up. So even though the sample sounds cool and dry, I kind of wanted to just make it sound a little different and make it fit with everything else. So I added a Juno chorus, which if you know me, like, you know, I love the Juno chorus. Like that's like one, just the Juno in general is like my favorite synth ever. And the fact that they have this plug in here, it's super dope. The real thing that I like is the reverb. The reverb kind of like makes it feel a lot fuller. The thing about this reverb is they have this little drive and it actually like gives it a little bit of distortion. So it gives it a lot more character. Next thing was pretty much an EQ. Uh, I used the Brighton preset in the EQ section and it just made it sound like a lot wider and brighter. Now the drums are actually the real thing that like gel everything together. If you listen to the drums dry,
now that's cool but what i did was i pretty much put them into one mixer and then i put a compressor on there to kind of give it a little bit more fullness and turn it off And then I use like a preamp. This is like probably one of my like favorite plugins. This is something that like I actually use a lot in quite a bit of the uh, projects that I'm gonna be showing you. So this is what it sounds like before. And after. It just adds a little bit more like punch to it. With the kick, the same compressor, but I use this uh, kick in preset. So it sounds a little fuller. For the bass, I used this. This is what it sounded like before. I didn't really like that. Uh, so pretty much use this slow and warm bass, bus force for a little bit of saturation and just a little bit of EQ, just to kind of take away that noise. And to pretty much gel everything together, I added the pre-1973 and I used the warm things up preset. Now that's a cool little idea. I would probably have like some other, just some other, other, other stuff on here. I kind of like to just make a ton of ideas. And then when I get stuck on something, I'll send it to somebody else. So that way we both can collaborate because, you know, making music by yourself, I know everybody wants to do everything by themselves, but you know, that shit's kind of boring. So let me play it from this point on without the effects. You're going to see a huge difference. It's cool, but I feel like the second version kind of just like beefs it up a little bit more. So let me share with you guys what I did. All of these channels in the yellow and the uh, profit channel, they're all linked to this orange one. I have like minimal processing on some of these other channels, but for this one, I have a bus force. So that way it all goes into like one uh, channel to kind of like gel everything together. And I use the light saturation preset for this. Again, the 1973, that's like my go-to preset. So so here's what they sound like with all the effects on there except for the mix bus. But when I add the mix bus on there, it just kind of gives a little bit more brightness and fullness. It's pretty cool to me. As far as like the individual tracks, I use a lot of reverb plate. This is like my favorite reverb from them. Um, I also use the spring one. That's like another favorite of mine. Again, chorus, reverb plate. I try to use only like one reverb because it gets a little too muddy when you try to like use a spring reverb, then a plate reverb, and then a room reverb. And it's it's doing far too much. The real thing to give it like crunch is on the master, I have 1973 again, the warm things up preset. Without it, the drums kind of would sound like this. I'm just gonna leave the soft clipper on there. That's cool, but I like the little crunch that the 73 gives. Of 
course, you know, the kick isn't on the one. Uh, if you guys want these drums, you know, they came from the one to girl pack, especially this 808. You, you guys already know. You guys already know who that is. So the next example I can give you guys is actually a collaboration from me and another producer named Francis Got Heat. If you don't know him, Google him. You'll see a ton of like hits on there. We made this with a guy named Keith Askey. And it was like one of his loops. And we use a lot of the Arturia stuff. Sounds super fire. So I don't know if I'm supposed to be showing you this project file, but you know, this is a little secret between me and you though. This is actually the main loop. What he did was put the Arturia Juno chorus on here to make it kind of sound a little different once this other guitar comes in. We also had a reverb plate again. So that way when it fades out over here, it's not like a, an abrupt, like just stop. You could at least have like a little bit of ambience or texture in there. So this bell, it's actually a one shot. We actually used Arturia's delay tape, which uh, this is like, if you listen to like Travis Scott or you listen to like a lot of Kanye stuff, this definitely has that. So when you hear it without, Now here's with it on. So the last thing we added was like the Jupiter for the chords and then the mini V for the bass. Gotta, you gotta clean that dead space, man. So as you can see, the analog stuff is nice to have in the physical form, but you could also have it in the digital form as well. All of this is convenience, and it's here to help you not only express yourself, but to create music, to create something fire for you, to give that authentic sound. You learn today what is warmth, you also learn what it sounds like, how it can add more character, and how it can improve your sound, as well as, you know, giving you guys some sauce with the plugins. I highly recommend you go download them, you go try them out, you know what I'm saying? And you can't really beat it because it's only like, with Splice's Rents own program, it's only $19.99 and you get three bus effects, four modulators, three reverbs, three compressors, three delays, three filters, and three preamps. That's a lot of threes, but they're all here for you. They're all here for your convenience. You can learn a lot from them and they even have a built-in tutorial function in the plugin so if you're ever curious or lost about something you could always reference that so you know it's a big help highly recommend you take advantage of that because if you get all of that for $19.99 you can't really beat that i actually googled all the equipment to see how much it is for the real world like neve compressors and all that stuff and when I tell you that shit is expensive, that shit is hella expensive. <laughs> so all these gems in this video, take it, run with it. I'm pretty sure they'll have a link down below so you can download these plugins. Uh, but that's gonna be it for me today. I hope you guys have a great day. Let us know what else you guys wanna see and make sure you guys like this video. Uh, and I will catch you guys next time.